Thank you all very much. Um, as everybody was talking here earlier, um, and it was getting later, um, for me, I was hoping everybody was going to go home. Um, but for my grandfather, I'm glad you're still here. Um, we loved him. He was a great man to us. Not a baseball player. He was our grandfather. Um, quickly, I'd like to say my wife and my daughter over here, they're both gorgeous. I love them. I've got two fam a family over here, table 91, table 92. My sister and my brother are there. The sister family thanks the Sports Hall of Fame for this award. It means a lot to us. Um, my speech was ruined because Greg has done such a wonderful job of putting all of the information, the statistics that I was going to tell you about him in the brochure and in the little episode that you had up here. He, he did a wonderful job. But if you don't mind, and excuse me for crying, um, uh, if Mr. Vermeil, with his character and his morality, can cry, maybe I can too. Um, the, uh, I have to, everybody's thanking somebody for being able to be here. I'm going to thank a couple of people too. They're not here. I thank my father for finding my mother who was George Sisler's daughter, and marrying her. And that's how I got here. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to, what I'd like to do to leave you with is some things that you don't know about him. Just a couple of things that maybe you can leave this audience with, knowing a little bit more about George Sisler than the statistics. There were only three ball players that ever hit 400 more than once, Ty Cobb, Rogers Hornsby. Am I, <laughs> I'm sorry. And my grandfather. Um, in 1920, when he had that good season, batted 407, he had 257 hits. He was second in doubles, second in triples, second in RBIs, second in runs scored, and second in home runs only to Babe Ruth. It was not a bad season. In 1922, when he hit 420, with two, re two weeks left to go in the season, he uh, tore a shoulder muscle and couldn't lift his right arm. He had the infielders throw the ball low to him so that he could retrieve it because he couldn't raise his arm above his waist. He batted ostensibly with one arm for the last two weeks of the season. Um, after he left baseball as a player, he left and went with his mentor, which who was his best friend, Branch Rickey. They went to Brooklyn and they went to Pittsburgh Pirates, both of them. In Brooklyn, my grandfather was asked, he was one of the scouts, he was asked to go look at a young ball player to see if he was good enough to make it to the major leagues. That player was Jackie Robinson. He also coached Duke Snyder, Roy Campanella, Gil Hodges, Dick Grote, Bill Mazeroski, and Roberto Clemente. He was their hitting instructor. Not a bad bunch of hitters. Um, I'd like to read a couple of quotes because sometimes statistics mean one thing. But if you, if you hear about what people say who were his peers, sometimes they, they mean a lot more. And I promise you, I'll, I'll be off this podium here very quickly. Um, my grandfather, when he received the award at the Baseball Hall of Fame, spoke for under 40 seconds. <laughs> I've already gone over that. Um, as a player, these are some of the comments of other players. He's the greatest thing to a perfect, he's the nearest thing to a perfect ball player. He can do everything. He can hit, hit with power, field, run, and throw. Ty Cobb. One of the marvels of baseball. If he has a weakness, nobody, so far as I know, has ever located it. John McGraw. There may be a better fielder, but I don't think very many. And any bird, who can bat 422 and steal 50 bases, would play first base on my team if he muffed a million. He is a university graduate and a perfect gentleman. He is an object lesson to all ball players. Babe Ruth. Sisler was the smartest hitter who ever lived. He never stopped thinking. And in the field, he was the picture player, acme of grace and fluency. Branch Rickey. As an instructor, as a batting instructor, these are some of the comments. He helped me more than anyone else in baseball, Dick Grote. 
Sisler showed me how to stop lunging, how to check my swing until the last fraction of a second. He showed me how to shift my feet and hit to the right. I'll never stop being grateful to him, Jackie Robinson. He's an even, he's an even more remarkable teacher of hitters than he was a hitter himself. He has the greatest eye for detail, and he's the most meticulous person in correcting mistakes I've ever seen. He has a wonderful knack of making his pupils do what he wants them to do and conning them into thinking it was their idea all along. Branch Rickey. And this was a quote that was made to, a comment made to my Uncle George. Your father was the only player who helped me, gave me tips on how to play first base. I'll never forget it. Lou Gehrig. And I thank you very much. I'd like to say one more thing. My grandfather was born in Ohio. He went to school in Michigan. He raised his children here in Missouri. And after his playing career, he came back and lived here. He died here, and he's buried here. We thank the Sports Hall of Fame. My grandfather, George Sisler, is a St. Louisan. Thank you very much.